Hello and thanks for clicking on this video and welcome to the review to the Samsung CHT70. It's a Quad HD 144Hz Quantum Dot VA panel with FreeSync and HDR. And today we want to check if it's worth to take a closer look into the Samsung compared to other 165Hz IPS monitors. Well, everything else you will find in this review. Thanks for watching. Have fun. I'd like to be alone right now. Want some space? I'm sorry for intruding on knock the time. Well, I'll head back then. Night. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light we'll see. That we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stay, stay in my. Hi guys and welcome to the review for the Samsung CHG70 in 31.5 inch. This is the first of two more upcoming Quad HD 144Hz VA FreeSync monitors to find out which of them is currently the best on the market. Currently we pay 800 euros or 600 dollar in 31.5 inch and 700 euros or 600 dollar for the 27 inch version, which is pretty high if you consider you don't have built in G-Sync within the Samsung. So if you're interested in the ever-growing monitor market and interested in knowing what the best monitor in a certain category is, then you should subscribe. If you are in the market for a high refresh rate Quad HD FreeSync monitor, please check the video description. Packaged with the monitor is a DisplayPort cable, a HDMI cable, a short guide, a USB 3.0 cable and a support CD. For connections, it has two HDMI 2.0 and one DisplayPort 1.4 inputs. Also added 3.5mm audio in and out and two USB ports. The build quality feels sturdy and leaving a good impression. Its design is very decent which I really like. Bezels are 1.2cm thick and also made out of anthracit matte plastic. On the side they have a silver finish. The backside kept in a dark bluish anthracite color, which of course also is made out of plastic. On the top, a big cooling slot. On the left, we find Samsung's logo. On the right, the HDR certificate. Also packaged with this monitor is a covering plate to hide all your connections. It is constructed very well as you'd expect from a monitor in this price bracket. The stand is made within a brushed aluminium look, but also made out of plastic and pretty lightweight. You can adjust in height, swivel, tilt and pivot, which is pretty crazy for a 31.5 inch monitor. Overall the monitor has a good stability, but now we come to the point why the monitor footstand is pretty bad, unfortunately. First. Adjusting in height changes your distance to the display. Second, the footstand will steal you a lot of space on your desk. The minimum range from the display to the wall is 36 cm at the sides and 31 cm at the middle of the monitor while it's a curved design. If you adjust to the maximum height then the range changes to 23 cm and here the footstand also adds around 7 cm in addition. As next, Samsung added a cable management solution, which isn't really a good one in my opinion. In conclusion, this footstand is close as same as the footstand from the CFG70 series, which also isn't that good and also steals a lot of space. 
Luckily, Samsung adds a wall mount, so you don't have to deal necessarily with this bad design footstand. Samsung's solution and navigation otherwise is perfect. You have a joystick with which you control the whole OSD menu. Here's a quick walkthrough so you know what to expect. After clicking the button, we come into the quick menu, where you can quick switch between your inputs, the iSafer mode, go into the main menu or shut down the monitor. Arriving in the main menu, we can switch between different presets. Game, High Brightness, FPS, RTS, RPG, AOS, sRGB, Cinema and Custom. Followed by changing your refresh rate between 60, 100, 120 and 144 Hz. As next, you can adjust your black equalizer to brighten darker spots or even make them darker if it's your preference. At response time, you can activate the backlight scanning function within faster and fastest. More about this feature you will find in the topic response time. At FreeSync, you can switch between standard and ultimate engine. Low input lag to reduce the input lag, of course. But I couldn't notice any differences without special measuring hardware. At picture, we can adjust brightness, contrast, and sharpness. Within color, we can adjust the color temperature within six presets or within RGB settings. Moreover, we have three gamma settings integrated. At system, we can turn on the light effect of the backside of this monitor, turn on local dimming for the HDR content, or set to auto. There is no HDR option within this monitor, but more about HDR in the topic HDR, of course. <laughs> Samsung's coating is half matte or semi-glossy. It's a good solution and I really like it. Still, as I always mention, I would prefer a more glossy panel to get out the maximum of image quality. You have to consider, with the curve and the huge size of 31.5 inch, you will have more reflections compared to smaller or flat TVs. The curve takes up the reflections over the whole panel, as you can see here. The last VA panel that I had was the HP Omen X35 and I really hated its viewing angle abilities. Luckily viewing angles on the Samsung are better. Even you still will have the iris in the middle of the screen where you have perfect image quality. Around this iris viewing angles will suffer, especially in dark image content. Your blacks will brighten up around this iris. The closer you sit to the panel, the smaller the iris will be and the worse results you will have in viewing angles. So it's pretty important to sit perfectly in the middle to the monitor to get the best image quality. I hope we will get some improvements in the near future here in viewing angles like in newer QLEDs from Samsung with its improved viewing angles. In the end, with the Samsung's viewing angles I personally could deal with, with the omens I couldn't. While I don't own expensive input lag measuring hardware, I compared my TN panel with the Samsung within a 60fps video in slow motion. The result however at the Samsung is good and very responsive. I couldn't feel any differences so nothing to complain about. Of course, the black level depends on your brightness settings. The uniformity of this monitor in subjective is good. You can see the LEDs or backlight bleed only when you look from a stronger viewing angle. On a full black screen you will be able to see the iris which I'm talking about on most VA panels. In the middle a bit darker, around the iris a bit brighter. So it's a VA panel and you will have very good blacks with the Samsung. Consider individual units also can vary in clouding, backlight bleed etc. On 120 Candela, I've measured a black point of 0.06 Candela, which is close the same as the Samsung CFG70 and the Omen. Taking a closer look into bending strips, where the CFG70 has pretty huge problems, the CHG70 also shows some bending problems, but much less than all my CFG70 models that I had. 
consider. This can vary extremely from model to model. If you had a bad luck, you probably can have more issues within bending strips, like I had on my CFG70 model, which you can see here. These both measurings are measured at 120 candela and optimum settings with a white point of 6500K. A deviation of maximum 10% in the backlight uniformity and a deviation of maximum 2.2 in the white point homogeneity, which are really good results for a gaming monitor, especially for this size and with the curve. Still, the personal impression is much more important than these measurings. Deviations in the white point homogeneity you will not really see in games. It's just something you should care if you're a professional graphics designer. The Samsung covers 125% sRGB and 87% Adobe RGB in colors. The impression straight off the box is already very good. Colors are very intense, but I think the Samsung CFG70 had a little bit more intense colors, especially reds into my eyes. While I cannot compare one to one, it's pretty hard to say and evaluate. Gamma settings with the three presets I've measured are 2.1, 2.3 and 2.5, which are good but not perfect. I think within a VA panel the Gamma Mode 1 with Gamma 2.1 is the best way to choose. So in the end, colors looks very good combined with the contrast ratio and black level. Here you can see pictures taken from the UFO test from Blurbusters. The Samsung is doing an excellent job for a VA panel, as close as same as the CFG70, with the huge benefit not suffering under purple artifacts. Black to grey response time also is better than on the CFG70 and the Omen X35. So you have less smearing within dark image content, like a black object behind a dark uniform color. Within the text scrolling test from Blurbusters, as same as the Chase Square test and Eiffel Tower test, everything seems fine. If we change the Chase Square color into black and set a dark background, we can see the V8 typical weakness in form of smearing. Luckily, Samsung offers a backlight scanning feature at this model. Backlight scanning works pretty good, better than LG's or ISO's strobing features but still worse compared to ULMB. The bad thing here is you cannot adjust brightness as same as on the CFG70 while using backlight strobing and you have to live with around 140 candela. On the top and middle screen area, the UFO still is good. On the lower you have clearly visible crosstalk and ghosting. Consider, on current TN and IPS panels with ULMB you have less blurriness and more sharpness with ULMB while moving some text on windows for example. In the end, I still appreciate the backlight scanning fun function from Samsung. HDR. To be honest, I don't had big hopes that HDR will work appropriately. And this is exactly what occurs, unfortunately. I tried to enable HDR within three games. Resident Evil 7, Mass Effect Andromeda and Shadow Warriors 2, without any chance to activate HDR, probably because the game software doesn't recognize the monitor as a HDR mo monitor and these games are optimized for 4K TVs. I tested the HDMI and DisplayPort 1.4 cable, different bit rates from 8 to 12, while this is a 8-bit plus FCR monitor I'm still wondering why I could choose 12-bit. The only way I found to activate HDR was on desktop, but then, holy, the image quality is even worse than my CRT monitor. Colors are extreme washed out, everything is just horrible. The HDR topic costs me several hours and I couldn't find a solution. Samsung's manual guide says, if an HDR signal has been processed by some devices, graphics cards, players, etc. The signal will not output any HDR meter data and thus will not be recognized as an HDR signal. In this case, local dimming needs to be enabled manually so as to ensure optimal HDR effects. So maybe HDR works, but with current games and software on this monitor, it doesn't. Okay, not a big problem. 
let's take a closer look into the local dimming function. Maybe this is something which is still good. As you can see here, the Samsung only has 8 dimming zones, which isn't really much. In games, you would like never see the common action. The only thing it will change is brightness depending on how much whites or blacks you have on your image screen. When having only a white square behind a full black screen, you reach a brightness peak of 473 candela. When measuring the black point behind a black screen, we get a black point of 0.15 candela on maximum brightness, which would result in a contrast ratio of 3157 to 1. But it's not a fair comparison since the white square is missing. Adding the white square, the black point also increases while the local dimming function has only 8 dimming zones and also will brighten the black level depending on where the white square is positioned. If the white square is on the top left dimming zone, you still have a contrast of more than 3000 to 1. If the white square is in a dimming zone where we are measure the black point, then the black point also become brighter. So the local dimming function will increase your contrast a bit, but by far not as much as in these measuring results, while normal image content has much more bright and dark spots. In the end, a local dimming function really can help. With 8 dimming zones, it's pretty useless. So maybe we can dim the 21 to 9 bars from movies? Not really. Dimming zones are just too big and the black bars still are not big enough to get out of the range from Samsung's dimming zones. So in conclusion, the HDR feature currently is unusable. The local dimming function for HDR is pretty bad, unfortunately. There's just one more thing I found within the Samsung manuals. It says that this monitor also supports HDR within consoles like the newer PS4 or the Xbox and 4K Blu-ray players. Unfortunately, I don't own a 4K Blu-ray player or a newer console right now. So if you are interested into HDR content, not only at the PC with this monitor, you can stay up to date within the limpscave.com forums or check the video link description to stay up to date. Taking a closer look into skies, explosions, smoke grenades and certain uniform colors, we mostly can see pixel inversion in the form of vertical or horizontal lines. The CHG70 has two more disadvantages here at this topic. First, pretty noticeable vertical scan lines, as same as the Asus Ultrawide PG348Q, mostly visible on uniform mid-bright image content like a mid-gray color. The problem here on the Samsung is moving objects in games. If you move your mouse a bit faster in a game, objects also can get some vertical lines. And second, text inversion as same as on the Samsung CFG70, which causes some sharpness within text as you can see here on this photo. Some people feel very disturbed with this disadvantage and says that text quality looks terrible. So text does not look as sharp as on other monitors without this issue and text looks a bit false while missing some pixels or sometimes a bit blurry with additional pixels. If you would ask me what I would prefer, purple artifacts or the scan lines from the Samsung CHG70 and the text inversion, I clearly would prefer the scan lines with the text inversion. But it's up to you, I just try to show you the disadvantages and you have to decide. It's very different from person to person what disturbs more. Another disadvantage on the Samsung here. The FreeSync range is very very low with only 80 to 120 Hz. I was able to bring the maximum range up to 140 Hz with the custom resolution utility from ToastyX, but I couldn't reduce the minimum range within this monitor. No chance to lower the FreeSync range on the Samsung. Otherwise, FreeSync works good. I tested Witcher 3, Mad Max, Trine, Overwatch, CSGO, Resident Evil 7, Shadow Warriors 2, Mass Effect Andromeda, and only the game The Long Dark causes a lot of stuttering and problems. So it comes in the end up to you if you can deal with this FreeSync range.
the grayscale test showing a bit red and green tint in the gray steps, which is pretty usual in gaming monitors. Even in IPS screens you will have some tint. On the Samsung a little bit more visible. However, bending is not an issue on this monitor and even viewing angles does not improve color bending as much as on the HP Omen X35. So for gaming everything is pretty fine. For graphics design IPS still will be the king in color accuracy. Consider, color accuracy is only important for graphic cards, especially in print. I have measured the brightness peak on standard settings for the maximum and minimum luminance. These are the results from my measurement. With the Samsung you have an average contrast ratio of 2022 to 1, which is a good result, but far away from Samsung's mind-blowing 3000 to 1 HDR contrast ratio. Consider, these measurings can also differ a bit, around 100 to 1 on each measuring point at the monitor, and can also differ from model to model. So take care if you just use settings from other reviews or from another person. After set the white point to 6500K and the brightness to 120 candela, I still had a contrast ratio of 1874 to 1. Consider, color temperature, especially for games, is personal preference and there is not really an optimum for games. Okay, let's take a deep breath. The Samsung in general is an awesome monitor. Very good blacks, awesome colors, backlight strobing, very good response time for a VA panel, low input lag, huge size, etc. etc. The more sad are Samsung's disadvantages. The footstand really is bad, at least in my opinion, but we can easily avoid with the included wall mount adapter. HDR is something I would wish it would work, but still there are only very few titles on the PC yet, which supports HDR, and I think the brightness on this monitor would not pass an effective solution for HDR. It is very daring of Samsung to advertise so strongly with HDR, although they probably know that current games does not support this monitor. I think the biggest problem for most AMD graphics cards users is the low FreeSync range. If you prefer backlight strobing or use a Nvidia graphics card, then maybe it's worth to take a closer look into a Samsung. Also the vertical scan lines and the text inversion is a huge problem for some people. Local dimming with 8 dimming zones unfortunately is pretty useless. You will take advantage of this function in very 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 rare game content. The only one scenes you will see them in action is when the full screen is black and a small object is showing somewhere at the screen. Visit limbscave.com where we can discuss all about done and upcoming reviews purchase advice, votings for next reviews and much more valuable information. Ask your questions, rate that video, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, take a look onto the pro and contra list at the end of the video. If you have any questions, criticism or suggestions, just write down below.